Hi and welcome to this tutorial video about model view binding in JSPX using JSPX Bean. JSPX Bean is just a simple Bojo class with nothing special. And we are going to use it to receive and view data entered by the end user. So we will start by using the JSPX video project that we created in the first video. First, we will create a simple Pojo class named user as our bean. We will add some attributes and finally, we will create getters and setters for all the members. As usual, we will use an HTML page sent by the designer, which is a simple, not special HTML. We will create a new JSP file named adduser.jspx. Then we will copy the HTML inside it. Let's run and see. Okay, it's working. Note that the gender ready buttons can both be selected, which should be mutual exclusive. We're gonna fix this later. Now, let's convert it to JSPX syntax by wrapping its HTML with the page tag. And let's convert some of the HTML elements to better JSPX elements. We will start by converting the birth date into a calendar. And we're going to specify a special date format for it. Then the gender will be converted into a radio group. A radio group can contain multiple radio buttons that will be mutually exclusive selected. Let's run and see. Oops, it seems that there's something wrong with the radio group we just created. Well, it is mistyped. Let's fix it and try. Okay, now another error. And there is no type check for HTML input element. So we have to fix this also, it's gonna work this time. Oh, now let's see. Okay, now let's create a controller for our page, which will be a new Java class named addUser. This class should inherit the page class. The HTML page will be linked to the controller like this. Then, we want to receive the click event on the save button and read what data is entered. In the button save, we will register event handler for the on-server click event. 
and the handling method will be named add user. In the controller, the stop of this method will be public void, then a method that will take two arguments. The first one is the web controller, which will be the sender, and the second parameter is a string, which will be the arguments. Then we will declare our pin user as a member variable. Then we need to add the special JSPX annotation that is used to mark this member as a JSPX bean. The annotation must specify the attribute name, and we will choose the name U for this JSPX bean. Note that, that we don't need any getters or setters for this member. The name that we choose in for this bean will be used in the binding expression on the page, as you can see. JSPX EL expression is similar to the standard EL expression, which is a dollar sign followed by two curly braces. Inside these braces, the name of the bean, which is in our case U, is used, then dot, then the name of the property as in the Java class. Now, in the event handler, we will print out the value of the object user as was filled in. In order to make that printing more friendly, we will override the toString method in the user class. Let's build and see. The user data is printed successfully. Another form of data binding that is to bind to a property in the controller itself, like getting the result message, for example. In this case, the EL will be using the term this, which refers to the controller. The name of the property will be typed then. In our case, we will only need a getter as we will only display the value. Note that the result message is updated successfully. But in normal cases, we might need to view the user details in a separate screen. So we will create a new JSPX file named view user. Then we will use the same HTML in the add user screen and only we remove all the input field, leaving only the EL expression. This shows how to use JSPX bean to view data.
Here we add the controller for this page. In the controller of the add user, we will dispatch the request to the view user screen. The method dispatch is a wrapper made by GSPX for the server dispatch method, which will take only one parameter. This parameter is the full path of the target HTML. See how it's going? Okay, seems working. However, the ID is not printing correctly and the send info field also looks empty. Let's get back to the HTML. We can see that we didn't print DL correctly, so let's fix it and see. Okay, now let's see what's wrong with the send info. See, the getter of this variable is generated by default to is send info method, which needed to be changed to get send info. This may not be good. Unfortunately, this is how it works. Now let's see. Okay, everything is cool now. It is noticed that the default value for the ID text field is zero. If it is required to set it empty, then all is needed is to change the member variable ID from end to integer. This is all for this video. Stay tuned for more tutorials and visit our official website gspx.sourceforge.net or our blog gspx-press.blogspot.com. Thank you.